lifelong learning. Um, often spoken about and everyone's saying as the economy uh, changes and work changes and the whole workplace changes, how important this is going to become with disruption, all the different stuff around skill sets changing. So lifelong learning, we are told, becomes more important. I think the other thing I would say is often when I speak to retired partners, let's, you know, managing partners forums, let's speak about partners. When you speak to ones retiring, they say, do you know what? The people I remember who were really effective throughout their careers were the ones who continually evolved and, and were really open to learning throughout their careers. They didn't think they got to a stage where they needed to stop learning. So I think the case is there and you see it. I'm sure you've discussed this with colleagues in your firms uh, as well. I would say I think there's been a disproportionate uh, emphasis on actually the pre-leader, pre-partner stage. Let's just talk about partners. I know there's the business service leadership as well, and also business services leaders becoming partners now. So there's that whole career path change. But if I think L&D, the budgets, I would say, as a former L&D um, leader and someone who chaired networks, disproportionately probably, we spend more money and time getting people up towards leadership. But do we actually think about that lifelong bit for, say, the 20 or 30 year career when they're actually moving within leadership? So I just wanted to touch on three areas, really. Um, and perhaps it's about helping people be very conscious within that 20 or 30 year career. So it's lifelong of actually the different phases. So I'm just going to say a few words about stepping up. So that step up towards leadership, then steps within, I'll call it and then stepping out as well. So just almost think about it as those three different phases. Um, well, in stepping up, the first rung into the leadership role, perhaps new partners when they're promoted. I think that's a phase in my experience for lots of skill building. You know, it's that ownership mindset. It's about owning a p &L. It's about, crikey, I've now got this team that's formerly part of my remit. I have to manage and, and develop. And so that's often programmatic, which is fine. That's skill building and the courses that came up in the survey. I would say also from my coaching I've done and how I've helped, you know, many people as they've transitioned to that point, never underestimate also the identity challenge here and that change in identity. You know, I remember talking to so many people and they said, do you know the real challenge? I'm the first person to be promoted in my practice group for a number of years. So these people who were previously my boss and a few years ahead of me, they're still a few years ahead of me, but actually now we're peers. And how, how do I deal with that? So there's some interesting challenges there, which I think learning can really help with, especially coaching. Further on in the, in, the, in the pathway, let's move to steps within leadership. I mean, obviously there are steps towards management as people as go through. But one thing I think really helped when we tried it in a few of the firms I worked with was helping people have a really conscious stop and think moment. Perhaps when they're in their 40s, they're, you know, the, the career's going really well. They're perhaps full equity partners doing a lot of really valuable client work, client relationships. Perhaps they've now become responsible for graduate recruitment. They've got this little portfolio of activities. But do they ever stop and think about, OK, that phase now I've been working on with all those responsibilities, do I want to shift that? What do I want to contribute to the firm in the next 10 years? And again, some coaching has been really useful at that point, I've always found. And I would also say to all those managing partners watching this as well, in this phase when their people are within that leadership, that really full-on leadership, busy leadership phase of their career, how often do we speak to them about their development and their career rather than just performance? Performance is critical. These are the high, high earning, high value assets of business, to speak of the people in that way and dehumanize it a bit. But again, how often do we speak to them about their careers and their development? So that was one thing. And just finally, Richard, just to end, I was just going to say on the stepping out and stepping beyond, we don't make retirement or stepping down at the end of careers an okay subject to talk about in my experience or not often enough and I would say there needs to be a real focus around that I think that's an area where L&D in the where I ran some initiatives build a community around that help to align the interests of the individual and the firm think about things like the remuneration structures at that that stage of people's careers how can you perhaps amend those so you can help people with their, with their looking ahead and Richard just to end I would say Interestingly, I think this is almost the part you need to start with, because if you think of the talent pipeline within the firm and the leadership pipeline that you need to create, you've got to help that generation feel confident about stepping out and looking ahead of themselves into a third career, whatever they want to do, so that then it frees up and change their identity. So it frees up the space in a very tight business model often for people to come up and through. So that would be my three phases, stepping in, stepping within leadership and making people conscious of that and then stepping out. And just my very, very final comment is, 
there's always some responsibility for us, say as managing partners, as the management of the firm, working with the L&D team. How often do you as leaders speak about learning yourself? Do you speak about what you're learning from clients? Do you make that a topic of management meetings perhaps as well, Richard? You know, perhaps five minutes as a standing agenda item. Here's a suggestion for you. Could there be something about what have I learned and use that language as well? Um, so that actually you really emphasize this is something that makes us good if we're constantly uh, learning throughout our lives in the firm. There you go, Richard. <laughs>